In this video I'll be starting yet another very long-term project and it's based around this and uh, anyone that's familiar with these will recognize it instantly. It is of course a PDP 11-34. So these were manufactured by DEC, um, very popular machine at the time and uh, there are quite a few of these around but they are becoming uh, increasingly hard to find. Uh, this is now uh, my machine, I'm the proud owner of my own uh, PDP 1134. It was uh, given to me by Rod, so many thanks for that Rod, it's uh, much appreciated and um, uh, hopefully I'll be able to make uh, quite a few videos based around this. The general plan is to get this working, hook it up to my ASR33 teletype, my ADM3 terminals and um, have some fun with it, but uh, the first thing I need to do is to get it working. I've got no idea what state this is in um, this is pretty much how it turned up. The only things I've done so far is I've unbolted and removed the rack mounts. So these, uh, if you're not aware of or not familiar with these, they have a very interesting rack mount system. They're normally in a 19 inch rack. Um, but these brackets bolt to the side of the machine. They allow it to be pulled out of the rack and then tilted and you can uh, tilt it to one of several positions. So it's quite a nice uh, system, but it's quite heavy, so I've removed it to make the unit easier to move around. If you've ever encountered one of these, you'll know they weigh an absolute ton. They weigh uh, 45, 50 kilos, something like that, but they are very heavy. And um, the other thing I've done is taken the screws out that hold the uh, bottom metal cover on. The top metal covers I've also removed, so at least unbolted. So I'll just get those out of the way. So a first look inside after removing the covers and we can see what cards are fitted. As with most machines of this era there's a whole range of different cards you could fit depending on what you wanted to drive and what capabilities you wanted from your machine. And uh, this is the first look so let's see what's in here. The, pro the first two are the processor and uh, we have an M8265-66 so this is basically a KD11 uh, EA, so it's um, one of the uh, later versions of uh, this processor and the basic processor functions are based around these two cards. So what you then have, and it's quite nice to see them in here, is we have um, what is effectively a floating point processor uh, card. What I'll do in subsequent videos in this series is we'll have a look at each card in turn go through its capabilities, what it does, what it's there for. Um, in this video we're just going to have a very quick look. I'm going to power it up and see what happens. I'm not really expecting too much but uh, we'll see what it does. Um, so we've got the basic processor which is the first two cards. The next one is the floating point unit and if we jump over this card, which I'll come back to in a minute, we have this uh, card and that is a cache memory card. So um, full kit in here, it's got the, the entire uh, four processor high performance uh, if you like um, version of the processor so it's very nice to have that. Notice this weird arrangement at the top we have these um, kind of jump over uh, cards and um, that's just because the data path for the uh, this is actually a data um, bus uh, that joins the various cards together and uh, depending on which card you fitted you need different uh, versions of this uh, jumper there's another one down here and it's just to allow efficient transfer of data between uh, one card and another so for example this bus connects the uh, CPU to the floating point unit and also to the cache memory to give a very um, high performance efficient data transfer okay so that's good the next card we're looking at is uh, an M7859, so that's the console control card. That's what allows us to control the console at the front, which we'll have a look at in a little while. Uh, we've got a, an M9312, that's a bootstrap controller. Um, there is no um, boot uh, card as such in this machine. Um, that's one thing I will be adding hopefully at some point. Uh, but the um, bootstrap controller is kind of a halfway house for that and uh, we also have two M7856 cards um, they're serial cards and real-time clock cards they allow you to generate 
interrupts and at uh, regular intervals uh, and also provides serial input and output either RS232 or 20 milliamp current loops. So there's two of those, that's quite nice. Um, notice, uh, if I will have a look down uh, in the, uh, the bottom later on, but uh, the back planes on these are normally uh, nine slots wide. So we've got the first one which goes up to here and then we've got another one and then there's one at the end and they're bridged with special uh, jumpers that uh, allow the, um, the bus to be extended. And down at the far end we've got M7254 up through 7257. So this is a, uh, these uh, four boards are a set and they're used to control uh, an external removable hard drive which I don't have so I shall probably remove those and this small card at the end is the bus terminator card. That has several functions. Firstly it has the resistors required to um, make the bus work. So they're, they're resistors that um, give the correct pull up and load for the bus. If it's not there the bus won't behave itself. Um, and also it provides the uh, end stop termination for the bus grant system. So the way this um, CPU communicates with cards is there's kind of a daisy chain of uh, signals going down a line and when it's asserted um, the first card that uh, intercepts that has the option to respond if it doesn't it passes the signal on the next card in a chain does the same and uh, if all the cards just ignore the signal and pass it on then ultimately the signal will end up at the uh, the terminator and its job is then to give a default response um, to allow the processor to continue. The other thing we have here, it's hard to see, again we will look at these, I'll take them out uh, in future videos, but this um, card with the black strip on it is a MOS memory card, so very nice to have that in here um, if it works. Um, they can be a bit problematic, um, they're not quite as reliable as the core memory cards but uh, we'll see what it does. And just looking down inside, okay, I can see what might be a problem. Um, I was going to move the camera so you can see down inside the unit. Okay, I said that the um, grant, the bus grant system um, is daisy chained throughout the entire machine. It goes from slot to slot on the back plate. And that kind of implies that if a card is not plugged in and there's an empty slot, then the signal will stop to stop propagating, the chain will be broken. So to allow it to work, you have these cards. I'll just pull one out. So these are uh, grant continuity cards, that's what they're referred to by a DEC. And all they really do is they short the incoming and outgoing grant signals uh, to allow the signal to propagate through slots that uh, don't have an actual card fitted um, and I can see you can't see it but there's one slot with uh, nothing in it so um, that means the signal will never be able to get to the uh, termination card and um, most likely it will cause the system to hang unless these cards um, are all active or at least one of them does something um, essentially the signal will be asserted by the CPU and unless some, somebody along the, uh, the chain does something um, nothing will happen because ultimately it, the signal will stop where there's a break in the chain. Do I'll put this back here and we'll power it up and see what it does. I suspect it's not going to do anything um, and we'll go from there and see if we can get any life out of it at all. I suspect we won't be able to. I don't think this has been used for a long time and um, quite often they, they need quite a bit of work to get them to to come back to life so I put this back in I move the camera again and we'll try powering this up I've got the mains cable plugged into a supply uh, the switch is in standby mode and uh, in this mode then um, in theory at least there should be uh, maintenance voltages applied to the MOS memory to keep the uh, the program intact I suspect it's not going to do anything at all. I'm going to switch it to DC on. I should power the machine up. It should come to life. And uh, we have a seven segment display here. It allows us to input data, see addresses, that sort of thing. And then we have various uh, LEDs for status indications. So I'm going to turn it on and uh, we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully there won't be a big bang and lots of smoke, but uh, let's see.
obviously a very noisy fan we've got DC on showing and we've got the run LED on so we'll try and halt the processor doesn't seem to be doing anything of course the keyboard could be faulty and it doesn't seem to want to do anything at all so take back off um, quite often the this can happen if there is a break in the uh, grant chain that I mentioned earlier so what I'm going to do because I don't have any spare um, jumper cards uh, I'm going to actually change the configuration slightly let's move the camera and show you what uh, I'm going to do to test this now the only cards we really need for this system to run are the CPU cards the rest are all just really uh, optional add-ons the um, back plane is in blocks of nine slots you can possibly see there's a gap between the first back plane and the second so what I can actually do is remove these cards or I can just actually remove the uh, the link so there's a link here that joins the two back planes together and there's another one here to join the third back plane to the second and again they're all daisy chained and then I can move the termination card to the last slot in the first back plane and that should effectively remove all of this I don't then have to worry about the uh, grant continuity card that's missing nor do I have to worry about any of these cards that might be interfering with that process uh, we can then try and power it up again and see if we get any further so I'll just get these cards out of the way and um, we'll remove this card and I'll transfer this card down to the last slot in the first back plane so now all I have fitted are the two CPU cards the floating point card the cache memory card, the RAM card, the console controller and the bootstrap controller and then the um, bus terminator uh, card in the last slot. So I'll move the camera, we'll try and power it up and see if that makes any difference. I suspect it's not going to work, I, I don't even know the configuration of the backplane on this so um, if it has been modified this may still not um, operate correctly depending on what cards it expects to be fitted but uh, I'll move the camera We'll give it a try and see what happens. Looking back at the front panel, we'll try and power it up and see if we get any further. So no, unfortunately it's doing exactly the same thing. I'll just raise the camera up so we can see back inside the machine. So looking back inside the machine, um, it doesn't really surprise me it didn't boot up. It would have surprised me more if it had. Um, but it does give us uh, something to play with. Um, I think this might be quite a long series. Uh, but what I'm going to try next is removing the cache um, memory card and also the floating point card. Um, we shouldn't need them for the machine to run and um, if either one of those is faulty and stopping the machine booting up then removing them should allow it to at least get a bit further so uh, I'll try that next and um, if that doesn't work then uh, we'll move on and in the next video start looking at fault finding so with both the floating point unit and the cache memory card removed the unit still won't boot it doesn't make any difference it just sits there with the run light on so I suspect it's not really running at all and so uh, in the next video in this series what we'll do is start looking at the power supply see if all the rails are intact massive power supply on the back of this thing and um, it's got a, a few uh, rails for the various functions and in particular uh, there are a number of rails that need to be intact for the MOS memory to function correctly. So we'll look at that in the next video and uh, hopefully at some point we'll be able to bring this machine back to life.